All right. So brief introduction about me. For those who don't know me, I'm Aurélie. I am from New Caledonia, so I have a French accent. So if there's anything that you cannot understand, just let me know as well. I won't be offended. I have the French accent, so I know it can be difficult sometimes. So I pretty much discovered lettering back in 2010. So when I was studying at university, and ever since I discovered the art of typography and lettering, I haven't stopped practicing since I just love it. And I actually got my first iPad back in 2017. So yeah, I would like I like to think that I'm pretty much self-taught with Procreate. I spent so much time on the app trying to understand how it works, try to experiment with different style, different technique. And yeah, I've been obsessed. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen that I do a lot of challenges. So I do a lot of, uh, I participate in a lot of lettering challenges. I have done 36 days of type three times. I have done one called um, Retroctober, Peachtober. And recently I started my, my own challenge, which is called the lettering style challenge, where I give prompts, lettering prompts to kind of help you find an ID for a project to work on and hopefully push you to try out different technique, different style and create more work. Because I believe that's how you find your style, how you discover new technique, how you improve your skill. That's by doing as much work as possible and by challenging yourself to do things you wouldn't normally do. And that's exactly how I discovered this style right there that you can see, which is called Pileteado Porteño. I probably butchered that as well. I'm not Spanish, but I just love everything Spanish. And I absolutely love this style that I just recently discovered. So just a quick background, guys. I also have this book. Um, no affiliation at all whatsoever. It's just a book that I found from Alfredo Genovese. He's from Argentina, I'm pretty sure. And that's where this style is from. And he's written so many, like, awesome books on this style. So maybe I can give you the link, guys. Want me to give you the link, Celine? It's just filetiado.com. Um, so yeah, it's a style that I've been quite, to be honest, like quite passionate about lately. I, When I did my latest challenge, I was experimenting with vintage styles so I experimented with a few different techniques and that's when I came across this particular technique and I thought wow that's that's really cool that's really fun so I did a couple of um, artworks in this style and a lot of people went crazy about it and they were like how did you do this how did you use those flowers how did you add those highlights and stuff so I thought okay this is the perfect <laughs> the perfect um, ID for a tutorial. I'm going to teach you guys how to do this style. So if you're interested, you can check out his website. There's plenty of like other bo books on this style, but I think this one, these are probably the best. And this style, like I said, is from Argentina, and that's what they were using on advertisements on like cars and shops and things like that so they were it's all hand painted of course and they would put that um they would paint that everywhere to kind of really grab attention grab attention and i think it's just amazing that technique that they've developed like it's a very recognizable style and they use only paint to create shadows and highlights and it just gives this illusion of depth and volume and I think that's really awesome and that's why it's so it's so beautiful to watch so this is what we're going to try and recreate today um, with this piece over there so obviously it's still my own style it's still my stuff and I I think it's it's really good to try and mix styles together so try and keep your own style and mix it with something that you've seen and reference other style and mix them together. And that's something that I really believe is important for any artist. So trying different different things, trying different style 
challenging yourself to do things you wouldn't normally do, just like this one that we're going to do today. So, yeah, let's just go over the resources that I have provided. So, if you have downloaded your files, you should probably have. Let me just check something. I, I can see my screen, but it's good. So you should have this folder right there, which is called um, Amor. Amour in French. I'm French, so <laughs> love. Um, so you have three Procreate files. The first one is the actual template we're going to be working with. Let me lower the brightness a bit. That's better. So we're going to be working with this file. So that's just a Procreate template with all of the layers that we can use. You also have the Filetato brush set and the Filetato watch swatches. So this is the color palette. So let's have a look at what it looks like within Procreate. So I'll give you a couple of minutes, guys, to just um, install everything on your device. So you should have this Procreate file. And normally, if you open it, it should have three different layers in it. So this is the lettering. This is the first um, group of filigrees and the second one. So make sure you guys have that. We're going to be using that. And then also, you should have the brush set. So the brush set is called Fileteado and it includes six different brushes. So these are actually samples of my vintage lettering toolkit. So these are all available in the toolkit. So these are brushes that we're gonna be using for this tutorial today. And you should also have this color palette, which is called Pileteado Lettering with Aureli Marin. And you should have all of those colors. <clears throat> so if you guys don't have this, just let me know if anyone is having trouble installing those or downloading them, just let me know. We're all good? <clears throat> Perfect. Just checking with Celine. <clears throat> all righty. So. I, because I've given you the files, guys, I want this tutorial to be very like beginner friendly and really go over all of the steps and make it as simple as possible. So you guys can ask me any question at all at, that you want as well. So if you, if you want to go over something in particular, just let me know. I've kept it quite simple so that we can really talk and chat and go over anything in particular that you want to go over. So we're going to be using this template. If you guys feel like you, you're ready to challenge yourself and do your own artwork and do your own lettering, do your own filigrees, by all means, feel free to do so. And feel free to create a new canvas if you want. My canvas is um, 3,500 by 2,800 pixels wide. So this is just a format I like to use. It's quite big, obviously, so you could go a bit smaller, that doesn't matter. But this is the format I like to use usually whenever I create um, an artwork in Procreate because it's nice and big and it works really well as well for social media. So obviously this one is landscape because I thought this would be better on Zoom in a live. But normally you probably notice that that always work in a portrait format, but for this case, for this purpose, I have made it landscape. So feel free to create your new canvas, totally up to you, or use this that um, this template I have provided. So I'm just gonna make a duplicate just in case. Feel free to do the same thing as well, um, duplicate it so that you still have the original because we're gonna modify this template. So feel free to just duplicate it so you keep um, a copy of it just in case. You want to go back. All right. So here, guys, I have, like I said, I have the lettering that we're going to be working with. 
I have two types of filigrees as well. So those filigrees, they're all hand-drawn. This lettering is hand-drawn as well. It's entirely drawn by hand. But it could be that you guys today decide to use an existing typeface. So it could be that you type a word, a word of your choice, and do that. Or you could use this template. OK, so this is totally up to you. At this point, I would let you <laughs> decide. I am going to be using this template. So the way I drew that, obviously, I sketched it first. So I did sketches with the iPad. And then I refined the artwork, did some um, guides, and then drew it with a inking brush. So everything was drawn with the second brush that you can see here, the flawless inking brush from the brush that I've given you. So obviously, it's a step that is quite time consuming. It takes a lot of time to draw. There's a lot of back and forth. And it's something obviously we wouldn't really have time to do in a one hour live workshop. So that's why I decided to give you the template guys. But if you wanted to learn how to draw those letter forms with me, how I draw those letter forms, I would recommend checking out my vintage lettering tutorial, which I'll have the link. But essentially, just to give you a bit of a background, I draw everything with the sketching pen brush. So I draw really roughly, and then I create a new layer on top and refine my letter forms using the flawless inking brush. And I just draw perfect letters like the one you can see here. So yeah, I don't think we'll have time to draw all of that today. So that's why I've given it to you guys. So I'm more than happy for you to use that. The brightness keeps changing because the sun outside is like being hidden by the clouds and then it's coming back. So the brightness changes. So don't mind me if I do that. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is create the dimensional effect for the word amor. So let's say you have your word, you're happy with it. Maybe you've typed it, maybe you've drawn it yourself. Maybe it's something that you already have that you've drawn previously. You can use that. So all you need really is just one piece of text on a layer separate and any color you want, you just want to make sure you have it on a separate layer and you can use that. <clears throat> I might just do one little thing, guys, before we keep going. I'm just going to export a PSD to my desktop, just so I have a, like a reference next to me. So far, so good. Everyone is ready. All right, let's get straight into it. Enough talking now. We're going to get straight into the cool, perfect stuff. <laughs> All right. So like I was saying, we're going to start by creating the dimensional effect for the word amor. And you, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that. We're just going to duplicate that layer and move it down. You could move it to the left, to the right, up or down. It's totally up to you which vantage point you choose. In my case, I'm just going to move it straight down. So you just need to select your layer, slide to the left and click duplicate. And I might change the color of that layer just so that it's easier to see what I'm doing. So at this stage, guys, you're more than welcome to use any color palette you want. I'm going to use the exact same colors that I have used for this artwork. So feel free to just do exactly what I do. So let's go ahead and select the actual baby pink color. So the fourth one in the color palette. And I'm just going to recolor the top layer. So you guys know how to do that. You just drag. And if it's not coloring everything, you just need to adjust the threshold and move your Apple Pencil to the right 
to continue filling. Okay. And then I'm going to grab the second one underneath and grab a darker shade of pink. And I'm going to do the same. Obviously, you cannot see it because it's in the background. So now with my selection tool, I'm going to go ahead and move that layer down. So you've probably done that before, guys. So that's how I make most of my dimensional effect. So you could put it to the right, to the left. Obviously, with this artwork, I already have room down the bottom, as you can see with those filigrees. So somewhere around here would be just fine. And here you can grab the flawless inking brush and you've guessed it, we're going to just connect the edges. So again, when you connect those edges, you wanna make sure they're all on the same angle. So if let's say I'm connecting these two corners together, I need to make sure that this line is exactly the same angle as this. So if you end up doing something that's a different angle, you've done something wrong. That's how you know. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm assuming that you guys are following as well and doing the same. So I'm gonna try and go as fast as possible because that's the easy part, the easy step. The easy stuff. Pretty sure that you guys have all been using Procreate before. If not, just let me know if there's any like people that are quite new to Procreate, just let me know as well. So I'm gonna make sure I do every corner. I could have given you the dimensional effect, but I wanted to make you draw a bit, guys. <laughs> Is everyone okay in the comments? Yeah. I'd love to know guys as well, where you're watching from. So <laughs> I know I ask you a lot of stuff at the same time, like drawing everything and tell me where you're from. <laughs> if you're done, if you're finished already, if you're faster than me, you can answer that in the comments. We're nearly done. So what I like about this brush is that you can use um, pressure to make it thinner or thicker. So the harder you press, the thicker it's gonna be. And it's quite a nice brush for inking. So doing all type of inking work. Actually, one of my favorites at the moment. I use it all the time. So another thing I wanted to mention is that um, this style, the Fila Teatro Porteño, is it's all done drawn by hand and it's all done with paint. So whenever you draw those letter forms and trying to and you try to imitate this style, don't feel like you have to make your letter look too perfect. You don't want them to be too, too straight, too nice, like too, too digital, like a real tight face. I think it's better if they're a bit more rounded, if there's some um, irregularities in the letter form. And essentially, if it's not perfect, I think it will look more real. Yeah, yeah. Where they're watching from. Oh, then cool. They don't have the chat. I don't have the chat. Well, I maybe I can bring chat. it up. You can just pop the chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, someone's from Spain. You can correct me <laughs> with my accent. Then. You can find that if it's distracting. Just pick me. And then pop chat. I can put that in like. Ah, uh, yes. Like that. So you just have the chat. Sweet. Thanks, Celine. <laughs> mm. 
Now that's awesome. So we need people from different places. I love it. All right, let's move on. If you if you if you need more time, just let me know. But I think everyone's good with that. So we have our dimensional effect now. So let's move on to create and create that empty effect. So if you've seen my artwork, it looks like the letter form is actually empty in the middle and it's um, being, being cut out in the middle. So let's just move a little bit faster now and do that rather quickly. So in order to create a stroke in Procreate, you guys know you have to draw it yourself. Uh, you could use the blur tool, whatever. It's going to be pixelated. So there's no better way than drawing it yourself. And in my case here, I like to, instead of drawing it, I like to erase the inside. So I think it's just easier. And there's not much else you can do. So in order to do that, I like to duplicate the top layer. So that baby pink one, I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to change its color again so I know what I'm dealing with. And let's just make it, make it any color really does not matter. So I'm just going to make it white. So I have three layers now, uh, the baby pink, the dimensional effect, which is a darker pink and then the white, which is on top. So now I'm going to select that top layer and using the eraser brush, I am going to use the same flawless inking brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start erasing the inside of my letter form, which is very time consuming, not the most fun part, but it has to be done. <laughs> so what I do is just try and draw as precisely as I can, I suppose. And I'm just going to try and keep the stroke the same size all the way. So just erasing the inside part of my letter form and try and be as precise as possible. What you can do as well, instead of erasing is select, whoops. So using the freehand selection tool, you can select the area you want to get rid of, go into your layer, select your layer and press clear. Oops. Make sure you erase everything nicely. So if you need to, you might, you might need to just adjust what you've done. And if you think you've gone too much, you've erased too much, what you can do is use your brush and put paint back. So fixing things like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the whole thing. I hope you guys can follow along. And I just want to like mention that it, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. You can always go back to this step later on and fix it if you need more time. But let's just try and do the best we can. So something else I wanted to show you guys, if you draw a curve, for example, you can hold it. So don't lift your pen off the canvas and it's just going to create a per perfect curve. So you can move it into place. And then as soon as you lift the pen, it's going to prompt you to edit your arc, which you can do and adjust the, the nodes of your arc and just position your stroke wherever you want. So that's quite useful as well. And then you can erase the inside. So it's just a very time consuming process, but it's still fun, I think. I still like doing that. Very relaxing. <clears throat> okay. Of course, you can draw a straight line as well. So here I would just simply draw my line, hold it until, until it's a straight line and then position it in the right space, in the right spot. I'm going to do my best to go as fast as possible.
selecting the inside. All right, and then with the R, let's move on to the O. We should be a bit fast. Up. This really is the best tool ever. I wish it was like that in real life. Uh, whenever I draw on paper, I'm like holding my pen or double tapping on the page. I'm like, this is so bad. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one. Thanks. So another tip as well, guys, you've probably seen me do that or talk about that in some of my videos, but whenever I draw a curve, I always draw the curve going away from me and not towards me. So that's why I'm moving the canvas here. So I would never draw this curve towards my hand. I would draw it away like that just because I have more control with my wrist. So I'm only moving my wrist most of the time when I'm drawing. And I think it's very important to always move your canvas around whenever you draw. It's such a great tool again, like something that you cannot always do with pen and paper. So take advantage of every feature in the app. You have a quick question? Yes. Did you draw the complete and incorporate the inking brush? Yes. Absolutely. So I used the sketching pen to draw the sketch, then created new layers, and then drew, drew the actual template with the flawless inking brush incorporated as well. But I did not, I didn't want to really include that step in this tutorial because I'm not gonna lie, it's it took me a while to draw that. Like it didn't happen <laughs> in just like five minutes. It's the the foundation, the the, the most important, I suppose. So that's why it's the most time consuming step, because you have to make sure you get it right. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So the stroke doesn't have to be the most perfect stroke in the world, I think. Because if you look at any example of um, fileteado, you'll see that it's never really exactly perfect. Like there's some inconsistency, some irregularities, and that's because it's all handmade and that's the beauty of it. So here we welcome the imperfections which is hard to, to do with Procreate, like, because Procreate makes it so easy. It's hard to make it not perfect. <laughs> I am nearly there. And then we can move on straight to my favorite part, which is adding the shadows and the highlights. Okay, I've got one more and then I'm done. <laughs> so you can see I'm doing the straight lines first. And then moving on to the real serifs.
for a second. ASMR <laughs> for great <laughs> lesson. All right, one more curve and then we're done. Let me know if you guys are unable to follow along with this step. It's a quite time consuming. So if, if you need, just do a couple of letters. If you haven't done all of the letters yet, it's totally fine. Just do as many as you can, and then you can do the rest later on. All right. Just making sure I haven't forgotten anything, and I did. I forgot this little loop there, this little stud. Just like a Western font. All right, so we should have our um, stroke now. So one thing I like to do as well, guys, is always rename my layers. And also for a video like that, it's just easier to rename everything so that guys, um, you guys don't get um, confused. So I'm just going to rename this one and call it uh, AMO 3D. So I know it's the dimensional effect. And this one can be a more main, so that's the main one. And this one is going to be the stroke. So let's go ahead and try and create that empty dimensional effect. And in order to do that, we're going to need to select everything that's inside our stroke. So every empty space, everything inside that stroke, we're going to need to select it. So let's select the correct layer, first of all. So select your stroke. And then you're going to use the selection tool. You need to make sure it's on automatic. And then you're just gonna go ahead and select every shape inside of your stroke, like that. Okay, and then we're going to create a new layer because we want to color those shape, give them a field color, but on a separate layer. Let's create a new layer. And here you can add any color you want. I'm gonna try and add another color again. So maybe the darkest shade of pink, just like that. So, Hopefully no one has any questions, should make sense. You now should have the shape for the inside of the stroke, which you can uh, rename again. And I'm gonna call it inside. That's the inside of the stroke. And you can slide it underneath. So it's behind your stroke. All right, is there any questions? No. Focusing on one letter. <laughs> no question. <laughs> All right, so now we have the inside and it's just below our stroke. So you're going to select it, select the entire layer and you're just going to slide it somewhere below like that. And that gives you an empty 3D letter effect. So let me change the colors because I think it's just not the right fit. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this the baby pink. So I'm just changing the colors here. So the inside is now the baby, baby pink, but the main is going to be the darkest pink. I think that's just going to look. That's just going to look better once we move that shape. Yes, perfect, amazing. <laughs> so, you guys should have something that looks like this. Now, from far away, it looks fine, but if you look close, closer, there's a few um, things going on that are not perfect. 
So what you can do is make, first of all, make this inside stroke, like the inside color, a clipping mask on your main shape. So it's just not gonna go past the shape. So let's just do that. So my inside, I'm gonna tap on it and make it a clipping mask. So it's a clipping mask on the main shape. So the original um, ammo that we had. Then the next thing we need to do is fix those corners. So it's something that um, you have to draw again. So I, in this case, guys, you, instead of using paint, you need to use the eraser because um, it, it can be a bit confusing, but this is um, the main, the, the inside, so you need to erase it. So let's go ahead and grab the eraser, again, using the fluorescent inking brush. And what I'm gonna do is just erase this part here so that it kind of connects these two edges, just like we did the dimensional effect. And the thing, guys, if you've done things correctly, it should be the same angle as the dimensional effect. Um, so when you move your stroke down, when we moved the, the inside stroke, always make sure you move it in the same direction as your dimensional effect. Otherwise it might look a bit wonky and out of place. So let's go ahead and do that. And also something that you might notice is that because we've selected the inside of the stroke using the automatic selection tool and we've colored the shape using that, it might be a bit blurry. So it's something that, again, I wish Procreate would do better, but um, if I was to, like if it was my artwork, I would go ahead and kind of erase a bit more just so that it gets rid of the, the pixelation. So you can see this shape, for example, it looks a little bit pixelated. I don't know if you guys can see properly on the screen. So I'll just go on top and make it smooth like that. So obviously I'm not going to do that today because it's not really important. Like it's not very visible, but if you're doing your own artwork at home and you have more time, then I would recommend that you do that just to get rid of the pixels. <clears throat> we need some music, I think, in the background. Feel like so quiet. And of course, if you erase too much, you need to go back with your pencil brush and then put back paint, which is the opposite of what we did before. So it can be a bit confusing sometimes. <clears throat> All right, I think that's everything for the dimensional effect. Okay, hopefully everyone can um, follow along. <laughs> All right, so now let's go ahead and put some colors down. So if you've done any of my tutorials, you know that I I often like to start with black and white. So I just start with different shades of gray and just position my color just to make sure they have enough contrast. And then I apply color. So in this case, obviously, I went through all of those steps on my own. Um, but um, usually, I try to keep my color palettes very simple. So usually two colors with different tints and shade. So here you can see I have the pink, but I have like a darker shade of pink that kind of goes purple and a lighter pink. And I have this yellow, which is almost like orange brown, um, kind of like a golden color. So essentially I have two main colors, just different tints and different shades. So that's why I usually do for most of my color palettes, keep it simple, keep it two colors. There's chances are you, you it won't be wrong if you only use two colors. What I would recommend as well is use actual Filetiado references. If you, if you have any, if you go online and you could use that as a reference for your colors, which really helps. Um, but yeah, in this case, feel free to just use the same colors as me. 
So let's just go ahead and change the background color. So I'm just going to create a new layer underneath everything else. And let's make it this darker purple. That looks terrible, this, this is great. So let's change that. <laughs> so let's grab filigrees number one and I'm gonna make it the um, brown color here. So that second shade of brown. And filigree number two is going to be the darkest shade of brown. We're gonna be adding so many shadows and highlights that it won't really matter. So at the moment, it doesn't look great, but I promise it will look better very soon. All right, let's add some shadows just so that there is a bit more contrast in the background. So I like to add a shadow behind the word and also behind the filigrees. Let's start with the filigrees because that's probably the easiest. So I'm going to grab filigree number one and I'm going to duplicate it. Grab the one at the bottom and I'm going to make it the darkest shade of purple. Now, why am I not using the darker shade of brown? Because I want the color of the background. And something I always mention as well in my tutorials, I never use the color black and I would never use black for a shadow ever. I always use the darkest shade of the color I am working with. So at the moment, we have this pinkish background. So I'm going to, be going to use a darker shade of that and use that as my shadow. So you could also go into your um, colors and just grab a darker, a darker shade somewhere on here or here. But obviously I'm going to use one from my color palette. So I'm going to change the color of the duplicate of that filigree that I have underneath. <clears throat> and I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. So something I often do as well, whenever I do a shadow, I use the multiply blending mode. And you could play around with color burn and other blending modes. There's no right or wrong. And then I'm going to go in my adjustments and add a bit of a Gaussian blur. And you can see it's creating a shadow behind my filigrees. I don't want to overdo it. So something about maybe, let's go 8%. I think 8% is fine. Then with the selection tool, I'm going to move it down a little bit. Oops, make sure you, you're on the selection tool, not um, the other one. And then you can move it to the right like that. So as you can see, it's just creating a bit of contrast. It's just um, adding a bit of shadow in the background, which is what we want. I'm gonna do exactly the same for the filigrees number two. So those tiny little filigrees and click duplicate. Grabbing the one underneath. Again, I'm going to make it that darkest color of pink. So that dark purple, changing the blending mode to multiply. In my adjustment, I'm going to add a bit of a Gaussian blur. And using my selection tool, I'm going to move it down a little bit. So it's something that you can do as well. It's just like add something, but then because everything on, is on a separate layer, you can always go back and edit it later. So if you think you've added too much shadow, too much of something, you don't like the color, whatever, that's the magic of Procreate. You can adjust um, everything that you do. All right, so now to create the shadow of the word Amor, we need to actually merge two layers together. So we actually need to use the main um, shape and the dimensional effect. So I'm just going to create a duplicate for the main word and the 3D effect. Then I'm gonna grab both and I'm going to merge them together. So essentially I'm just creating one big shape with all of the shape. Make sure it's a duplicate, don't merge the original. And I'm gonna create a clipping mask. 
So a new layer, clip, make it a clipping mask and then put the color on it. And I'm gonna merge these two together. I'm going too fast, just let me know. But essentially I've just changed the color of both the main and the 3D shape merged together. And then I can go ahead and change the blending mode to multiply, add a bit of a Gaussian blur and move it below. I think this one needs a bit more, uh, more blur. <laughs> like that, I like that. All right, let's um, keep going. I'm going to now add some uh, colors, some shadows and highlights to the word amor. And let's start with, what are we going to start with? The dimensional effect, I'll say we should do that. I'm going to change the color of the stroke as well because I'm not a fan of the white. <laughs> I think it needs to be pink. So let's start with that because at the moment, um, I think it needs, it needs something there. So I'm going to, everything I do, guys, I always do non-destructive work, which means that everything is on a separate layer and everything can be either removed later on or edited later on. And I never really like get rid of anything. I, if I need to, I always make a duplicate of my layer of my entire artwork if needed, but I never lose anything. I always try and keep everything so that I can always go back and make changes if needed. So here, instead of just coloring that stroke, I'm creating a new layer and I make it a clipping mask on top of that layer so that if I want to hide it or change it, make it bigger or change the color, whatever, I can always go back and do that. So let's grab that same pink and I'm going to change the blending mode to add. And what it's gonna do is create a brighter um, layer. So I'm using the same color, the same pink, but it's gonna appear brighter. So it's a one of my favorite blending modes. And here guys, we can go ahead and use the oil paint brush. Actually for this one, I might just use the smooth blend because I'm just gonna create some like a highlight at the top of the word. So let's just keep, let, let's just use the smooth blend for this one. Might make it a bit bigger. And you can see what it's doing. Even though I'm using the same color of pink, because I'm using the blending mode called add, it's just gonna create um, a brighter color. So I'm gonna change the opacity because it doesn't have to be too much, but essentially what I wanna do is create some reflection at the top, almost like if the letter was popping out, it would have some sort of highlight just on the top. I don't want it to be too much. So here you can go, since it's non-destructive work, you can go and change the opacity and change it to 60%. So just subtle highlight on the top of my word. Now let's do the same thing for the inside stroke. Now the trick is here, it's already a clipping mask. So how do you do non-destructive work on a clipping mask? You can't really create a clipping mask on a clipping mask. So what you can do is just make a duplicate of that shape, just so you have a backup if needed. And we're going to create an alpha lock. So we're just going to essentially tell Procreate that we only want to draw on the word, on the inside stroke and not outside. And that's what an alpha lock does. So I'm just gonna select that layer and click alpha lock and it should have that little checked background on that layer. And that just means that we're gonna be drawing only on the, um, on the word. So only on that shape that we have on that layer. Uh, so a question, um, if you want to find those books, it's yeah. on that website. Absolutely. Yeah. I should get commissions. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's amazing um, that 
um, Alfredo Genovic is really good. He's got a Domestica course as well. Maybe you can link that. Mm. Yeah, I think you have to send him a message and ask for the books. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we will send them to you. All right. So now we have our alpha lock on that inside stroke. We can start painting and it's just going to paint on that layer. So in this case, I'm going to use the old paintbrush because now I want to add some texture to my to my letter form. So as you guys remember, um, filetado is all made with paint. So this brush that I have created is actually meant to kind of like represent oil paint. I like to think that it looks like oil paint. And it's, I call them, I call those brushes blending brushes because they actually don't lay out too much paint. They just push the paint around. So they, whatever paint you have on your canvas, it's gonna blend and merge together and be pushed together and blend nicely, just like real paint pretty much without being too overpowering. So with this brush, it's very nice to gradually add more paint. So if you put more pressure, it's just gonna add more paint. But if you just lightly brush it over your canvas, it's gonna mix paint together. So here, that's what I did. I just added like a little gradient at the bottom, just like that. But what I've done, I think I started with the, the normal pink first. And I actually, yes, went all the way like that with the, that baby pink color. And then I did a second coat with that darker shade of purple and kind of emphasize the bottom, creating like a gradient effect, very gradual. As you can see, I'm, I'm never like adding too much paint at once. I'm just gradually adding paint. And this should create this nice texture effect, which resembles actual paint. This is what I've did, done here. Feel free to do the same or experiment with whatever color, whatever type of gradient you want. Just drawing on the inside. And I think this gradient as well helps with adding volume. Like it looks more like it's three dimensional. Right now, moving on to the purple, just making the bottom part even darker. Thanks. Right, I'm happy with that. Obviously, it's like a step that I would, I would probably like spend way more time on it, but I don't want to like spend an hour just on one, one thing. So I want to give you as much information as possible, and as many tips as possible. So now we're gonna add a bit of um, shadows and highlights on this part as well. So the inside of the dimensional effect, which is actually our main shape. So all you have to do here is just um, in, um, what was the word I wanted to use? I forgot, um, insert, insert a clipping mask just below your inside stroke and just above your main um, word. You don't need to rename it here. Like you could go ahead and rename every single layer, but if it's your network, you know, but I think it's always important to rename the main shape, like the main parts, just so that you know where you are. Otherwise, it can get confusing. So I've created a new clipping mask just above that main shape. And here we can add some shadows first. So we can change the blending mode of that layer to multiply. And 
Let's use this darker shade of purple. And I'm still using the oil paintbrush. And here I'm just going to try and find like the deepest corner and add a bit of shadow. You can see what it's doing. It's very, very simple. Now, how do I know exactly where to place the shadows? I don't really, I'm just guessing that wherever there is a tight corner like that, that's where the shadow would be. So trying to move on a little bit quickly here. Because I really want to go over how to make those um, filetea de flowers with you guys. I don't want to, I haven't forgotten. I know you guys wanted to do that. So, all right. So I've added the shadows roughly. Now I'm going to add some highlights as well. Usually every shape, I try to add at least one shadow, one clipping mask, one layer with shadows, one layer with highlights. So I'm going to create a new clipping mask again, just above all of that. So above that main shape, above or below the multiply layer, it doesn't matter, but I'm changing the blending mode to add. And here I would recommend using maybe that pink color. And you can just add a bit of highlights. It's probably mm, too much. Maybe, oh yeah, that's better. That purple, um, using the same purple, so the same color as I currently have here, it just looks so much better, like so much more natural. Oops. You know you're on the video. <laughs> yes, I'm hidden. You're here. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Do we have any questions? No. That's good. So yeah, I'm just adding highlights wherever I can imagine there is some light being cast there so wherever there's a shape that's kind of like more visible or sticking out like those little uh, pointy edges here i'm adding a bit of the highlight because i'm guessing that's where the light would go it doesn't have to be perfect that's always what i'm um trying to remind you guys because it really doesn't like if you look at actual filetado art, it's not perfect. And if it was, it would look too digital, it wouldn't look great. So you can change the, the, the opacity of your layer as well if you need to. And the multiply layer here, I think is a bit too dark. So I'm just gonna lower it maybe 70%. Something I can go back to later on if I need. All right, um, one quick last thing on this word and then we can move on to the filigrees. So I'm going to do the same thing, but on the dimensional effect this time. So creating a new clipping mask just above that dimensional effect and changing the blending mode to multiply. I'm gonna use that purple there, second color, still using the oil paint. And here I'm going to place some shadows on those serif. And if, I choose to put it, if I have like a curve like this, if I decide to put it on the right, then I have to stick to that decision for all serifs. So I could not do that. I have to keep it on the right. So on the right here as well. So whatever you choose, just um, use it for every, every shape that's, the the secret <laughs> you have to be consistent with whatever decision you make so there is no right or wrong but you have to stick to your decision don't change your mind halfway because then it will look like a mistake so i'm going to try and go as fast as possible this is a step that obviously could take way longer you could spend way more time refining it and um, adding multiple layers of shadows as well you don't have to just stick to one. 
You could add multiple layers, which is going to add more depth. You could use different colors for your shadows. Try to blend things together. I think that could be nice as well. You could um, use different blending modes. So I'm using multiply at the moment, but you could experiment with color burn or darken or any blending mode like that. There is no one rule. It's up to you what rule you make for yourself whenever you draw. And that's the magic of Procreate. It's all about experimenting. Like I still discover things whenever I use Procreate. I'm still like, oh, maybe I could do that. Okay, so I have the shadows. It looks good. Good. I am going to now add some highlights. New clipping mask again. And changing the blending mode to add. And like I said, I like to use the same color as I have in the background to create my highlights. So here I'm using the same pink. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> I just love adding highlights. And I think this brush is really cool because it really creates some cool um, texture effect. And it's very easy to blend. Like if you don't put any pressure, it's just gonna move the pigments around. It's just not gonna add more. It's not gonna lay, lay more paint, which is very useful for creating gradients and things like that. All right. Trying to move on quickly, guys. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. But I want you to get as much information as possible. And I also want to be able to show you how to do those filetés de flowers. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the flowers now before we actually get into those filigrees there. I have provided a stamp. For you so let's create a new layer on top of absolutely everything else everything we create a new layer and we're going to grab the filet de flower stamp which is the third brush from that toolkit and you can grab any color you want but something quite visible like white would be good and we're just going to stamp that onto our canvas wherever you want, because it's on a separate layer, so we can always move it later on, all right? So let's, <clears throat> once you have your stamp on a layer, you're going to create another layer, always on separate layers, so you can move things around, erase if needed. And here you can grab the flawless inking brush, and you, I'm sure you've guessed it, we're just gonna draw every single petals in the center of the flower. And the great thing is we can, we did, we don't need to draw it five times. We can just draw it once and duplicate it. Let's, uh, what color are we going to use? How did I make the flowers again? Ah, yes, pink. So let's grab the pink. And here you can just draw an arc and hold it. Might not be too pretty. So if you have to, might have to do a couple of goes, something like that. Um, and yeah, if you really want to make it like very symmetrical and save yourself time, you can even duplicate that shape, that half a, <laughs> half a, a heart, and move it there. <laughs> and then you can merge these two layers together. Let's close the shape off and fill it with color. So we've got one petal that's easy peasy. We can duplicate it and position it. Let's turn off those uh, magnetic settings. So turning off um, magnetics and snapping so I can position that shape wherever I want. So you'll see it's not the same shape exactly, but you can resize it. You could also draw every single petal individually. Like it's not gonna be, gonna take you that long. <clears throat> Oops. Mm 
-hmm. All right, so we've got our petals. Might have to add a bit more color in here. And we're going to create that circle again on a separate layer because we want to be able to add shadows underneath and add dimension to just that circle in the center. So make sure you're on a separate layer. And let's grab this color. So you guys know how to draw a perfect circle in Procreate, I suppose. So you just draw your circle, you hold it, and it will create a nice round shape. But if you hold it with two fingers, it makes a perfect circle. And then you can place it where you want, something like that. All right, we have our flower. Now we can hide the stamp in the background because we don't need it. And that's where the fun begins. <laughs> so we're going to start with the petals. And something they go over in the book, which is very interesting, um, they talk about um, how they create volume just by adding shadows and highlights. And they show you how they do it on different types of shapes. So shapes that are like rounded, uh, shape that are like um, empty and it's very very well explained. Um, I got the the one in in Spanish because I can understand a bit of Spanish and I thought that was nicer to have it Spanish. But make sure you get the English book if you if you need to um, understand what it's about. So I um, I'm going to try and replicate that technique using just Procreate. So we need to create a clipping mask above. The petals and we're going to start with the shadows. So I like to imagine that those petals are kind of empty and kind of like concave. Is that the word? They have, they are like kind of empty in the middle and um, kind of rounded, but not above, like below. There's a word for it, carved, yeah. It will make sense when <laughs> once I draw it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna try and do is also imagine from the beginning, okay, my light is coming from this direction. So like if I had a little lamp, it will be on, top, on the top here. If it was the sun, it would be positioned there. So therefore all of the shadows would be on this side. So we're going to grab the oil paint brush and we're going to use the multiply blending mode for our layer. And here I'm just going to try and add a bit of shadow, but just in this um, section here. So it looks like there's a little bit of an edge as well. So I'm going to leave this area blank and that's where we'll, I will had highlight highlights later on. But again, you can see I'm like gradually adding more paint, focusing on this part here. And if you put more pressure, it's just gonna add more paint. If you don't put pressure, it's just gonna blend. I love this brush. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. So here, I'm also imagining that the light is coming from the same um, place. And therefore, I need to add the shadow just on this area here. And maybe a little bit here as well. Let's emphasize that a bit. So you can gradually add more. Concave, that was fine. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> I, I should have been a bit more prepared. It's like, it makes sense in my mind and then I have to explain it. I'm like, um, how do I explain that? <laughs> Something like that. 
And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. So obviously, we're not going to position the shadow here because if the light is coming from here, it's probably going to hit this part of the petal. So the shadow will be probably, probably around here. <clears throat> Again, if you get stuck and you're like, where do I add the shadow? These reference images, like do your research, try and find examples of filetado flowers and really observe how they are constructed. So really try and look at where the shadow is, where the highlights is and things like that. So that's for the inside of the petal, but we can do that as well for the the edges. So I am guessing if this petal is in like this three-dimensional petal, there will probably be a bit of shadow here as well. Let's make that smaller. And definitely somewhere around here. Something here. Okay, looks like it's um, having a bit more volume now. It's not looking so flat. Um, what we can do now is, what I like to do actually, guys, is like I said, add multiple layers of shadow just to add a bit more depth and it's just gonna look even better. So you can create a new layer uh, change the blending mode to multiply, make sure it's a clipping mask. And here you could use a different shade. So you could use the darkest shade of purple. And here you could um, add even more. So you can see it's just going to add even more depth and deepen that shadow. This is what I did with my, my flower. I've also added a shadow around here, just like if that circle was like casting a shadow. This really is my favorite step. <laughs> just love doing it. It's almost like it's magically like popping out of this screen having getting more and more volume each time you add a new layer of shadow. All right, that could go on for a long time. Like you spend a lot of time like zooming in, zooming out, looking at references, coming back to it. So let's move on. Um, you could spend as long as you as you want on it. That's what I mean. But let's move on so that I can show you the next step, which is to add another layer and changing the blending mode to add this time. So we're going to add the highlights. So we can use that baby shade of pink, like that baby pink shade. And here I'm still imagining the light is coming from here. So if there was a light, the first thing you would touch would be this side there. So let's go ahead and add some highlights on this. I just love it. Like, I don't know, something about highlights and texture and volume. Here as well, I think that's where the light would be. So same thing on the other side. What you could play with as well, uh, it would be like a little challenge for yourself would be to get rid of everything, like every shadow and highlights and then placing the light on a different angle. So light coming from here or here and that could create some really cool effects. So I challenge you guys to play with that. <laughs> it's your homework. So that's it for the edges, but then if let's say this shape is concave, so we need to have some highlights on this side as well.
can gradually add more. And in here. It's mesmerizing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also mesmerized. I'm like, oh my God, I love it. I just love this texture as well. Look at that. So cool. So yeah, those blending brushes are really cool. Something that you can, um, I challenge you to do as well is, because this one is like the oil paint, but within my vintage toolkit, I have all of those blending brushes. So this is, these are essentially the same brushes. So um, instead of, but instead of having oil as a texture, they have wood, stone, basalt, sandstone, concrete, oil paint, which is the one I gave you guys, and the crackhead paint. Um, but they all work the same. So they all work as a blending brush that you can gradually blend and add. So some really cool effects that you can play with as well. All right, let's move on to the center. Again, you could add as many layers as you want, play with it as much as you want. Um, but I don't want to spend <laughs> one hour because we're nearly done. I don't want to run out of time. I'm going to show you how to do the center. So if you create a clipping mask, um, let's add the shadows first. And here I'm using the darkest brown. And I am just going to, again, imagine the lights coming from here. So essentially, this second half would be in the shadow. But because it's a circle, it's not a flat shape, um, it will probably have some sort of like angle to it. Like it will probably be more like this. And I like to keep the bottom part um, not too dark as well, because I think that just adds even more volume because if it's rounded, there will probably be reflection on the bottom part as well. So something again that, I would recommend using reference images, um, observing how every shape is. And you can use, you can, don't have to use like reference images that you see online. Like it could be an object, like a ring or whatever you have, that's kind of what you're trying to do and just observe it. Like look at it with the eye of a, an artist. So the eye of someone who's trying to redraw it um, and really try and, understand where where do you see the highlights where do you see the shadows and how what do they look like what what is their shape and if you're trying to redraw it how would you do it okay um let's add just a quick um other layer with a bit more shadow because i think the something as well i wanted to mention the more contrast will, you will have between dark and light shade next to each other that's what's going to create that illusion of um, chrome or volume or shine and whenever you're trying to get make something even more bright and sparkly and like in your face use more contrast so that's the secret use more black against white and here if I use an even darker shade it's going to make my highlight stand out even more so if I darken that even more don't make sense in a minute. It's just going to look even better when I add the highlights. So new clipping mask, changing the blending mode to add, and I'm going to use this yellow color. And that's my favorite part. <laughs> just love it. And the fact that it's like super bright, almost almost like yellow, whitish, against that darker color really creates that shiny effect. Because you guys know it was just a flat, it's just a flat shape, but you've just added so many details, so many highlights and colors and shadows that it looks like it has dimension now. Um, I've also played with different colors because I think it just adds even more volume. Added a bit of a um, second highlight at the bottom, just like if there was like a light cast down there. Um, okay, so 
Another thing I did was add a cast shadow. So same technique that we used for the filigrees and the words. I just duplicated that bottom layer and changed the color to the darkest purple. So the, just the, the petals, I just changed the color to the darkest purple, changed the blending mode to multiply and added a bit of Gaussian blur. So you guys know how to do that. And then you can move it somewhere below, wherever you want. If it's too dark, you can just lower the opacity to make it look a bit more subtle. Um, what else did I do for this? I, oh yes. Um, I have added an extra layer on top of everything where I have added a bit of a highlight on the edges. So create a new layer, changing the blending mode to add. I'm gonna use that last brush that we haven't used yet, the precise glimmer. And I have used just the white color. So again, it's a technique that I like to think I invented and now I see everybody do it, which is awesome. Like, by the way, guys, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I had someone ask me, aren't you scared that someone is gonna get better than you if they do all of your classes? I'm like, no, they." It would be good, like, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Like, everyone can be better. That's why I'm like, I love teaching. Like, I just, I'm not like worried that someone will get better. It's, it's the whole point. And that's why I keep learning as well. Like I keep teaching, but I keep like taking lessons too. And I'm never gonna stop. That's the secret. So, as you can see here, I'm just adding a small outline on the edges. And what it's doing, I think, is making it more, I don't know, it's almost like having more presence and like blending everything together. Because at the moment, it kind of looks like this shape has been placed on top and it's not really blending nicely. So just adding a bit of an edge like that. I don't know if you can see the difference, but it's just, blending everything together and kind of making everything cohesive and working together. I keep adding stuff in <laughs> things. Um, make sure you change the blend mode to add. It didn't work when I did it. Come on. <laughs> there you go. And whenever I use this brush, so the precise glimmer, I always like to have very little pressure, as little pressure as possible, then add a bit more pressure and then let go. That's really going to just add a nice little glow on your corners. And you have to be very, um, use this very sparingly because if you add too much, it's just, it's just not gonna work. And if you put the same pressure all the way around, it's just not not gonna make it. Like it's just not what we want, it's not the vibe we want. So you have to really um, be gentle with it. And again, I don't know if you noticed, guys. I'm just adding adding them wherever I think there will be a highlight. So wherever I think my light from the top has been um, casting some light. But I still. Place some at the bottom as well. Something like that. Do we have any questions? No. No. All right. How much time do we have? Are we kind of nine thirty? Because um. I wanted to just quickly, quickly, very quickly show you how, how to add the highlights on, let's say this shape, for example. I used the exact same method that we've used anywhere else. So the method I've used here, this is what I used for this. So just quickly showing you guys, just so that you can practice that at home and create a new clipping mask. Yeah, you're totally fine, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We've got buffer time, but you're also the last of the day, so I'm sure people wow. won't mind. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, I'll go over time.
quickly. I'm just going to show you exactly how we place the shadows on this. So same technique, flipping mask, changing the blending mode to multiply, using the old paintbrush. Now, I know it can feel a little bit intimidating when you look at a shape like that and you're like, okay, where do I position the shadows? Where do I position the highlights? And it's all going to be about making rules for yourself and decide, okay, everything that's, I don't know, maybe um, at the top. So if it is, is the north, everything up north is going to be a highlight. Everything south is going to be a shadow. So everything that's facing the north pole is going to be highlight. Everything is going to be facing the south is going to be a shadow. So you decide from the top, from the beginning, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And you're going to try and do your best to always follow this rule. Because if you don't, then it will look strange. It won't look um, the way you want to. So let's say we have this round shape here. My sun is up north. South is where the shadow will be. So I'm going to position the shadow on this area here, the area that's facing south. So again, it's a rounded shape. So it will be something roughly like that, okay? Then I'm gonna show you how to add the highlights. So same thing, take the mask, change the color. And you will have your highlights in the top part, okay? Roughly, this is what it's going to be looking like. Now, this is the circle, so it's easy. Now, let's try and do this part, okay? So everything south, everything facing the bottom would have a shadow. So you have to almost like divide your shape into two and just focus on the bottom side here. Easy. Then let's place the highlight, which is at the top. Yeah. But this part here is where things get tricky because you're like, well, where is it? Is it facing north, south? And the answer is it's nothing. Like it's not facing anything. So you have to create like a gradient and make it fade a little bit. Okay. So then you would tackle the next section, which is this arc over there. And then same thing, you would try and think, okay, what is facing the south? If I divide this shape into two sections, this is facing the south. This is in the shadows section. Oops, a little bit too much. Like that, okay. And then this is facing the north. So this is where the highlight is. And then gradually fading to this point where it's no man's land. We don't know where that is. <laughs> And technically, if you do that all the way through, it will give you this volume effect. And again, something I do last thing, um, and then I'm done, I promise, is to add another layer with even a darker, an even darker shade, just to create even more depth. And that's when you can really like play with different levels of depth. That's way too much. Let me change that. That's why it's so important as well to have multiple layers so that if you've done something wrong, you can always go back. Okay, and here I would kind of emphasize this area. Same here. And again, with my um, precise glimmer brush, can create a new layer with the blending mode change to add and just add some reflection on the edges, trying to focus on where you put your highlights. So if your highlight is here at the top, then that's where you put more pressure if you want, like you don't have to be that much to go that much. But then, Something as well, like if this 
is hit by the light, chances are it will cast a bit of light on this shape as well. So what you can do is just create a very tiny little highlight there. And that's just gonna create more, like a more realistic volume. <clears throat> And that's what I did all the way through. So um, of course, doing that in under an hour and a half will be a lot of work, but I think we've done pretty much, we've covered pretty much everything. I also added those highlights on those shapes as well. Just very tiny, very subtle. Again, nothing too crazy, but I think it just adds a bit of a, a edge to it and blends everything together. So that's what I have added. One last thing and then we're done. I'll show you the final artwork. Um, I've added a bit of grain as well. So let's say that's the final artwork. I am done, all finished. I have merged all of my layers together, made the duplicates, don't merge everything without making the copy first because you don't want to lose your layer ever. I just added a bit of noise. So something I do to most of my artworks because I think it just gives them a bit more of a natural look, like it looks less digital. And I've just added about 8%, 5%, yeah, 5%. So it will be a bit hard to see, but it's just added a bit of a, a noise to it. Um, you can see also, oh, I thought it was the one without it, but I've also added a bit of a chromatic aberration which is this setting over there. So we make adjustment down the bottom, you have chromatic aberration. And what it's doing is just kind of displacing um, the colors. So that's actually showing the, all of the um, like RGB colors. So red, blue, green, that you can see appearing like that. But I didn't add too much of it. I probably added just like 5%. And again, that just makes the whole image look less digital, a bit more blended in. And, and that's, that's what I did. Obviously, I spent quite a few hours on it. Like I didn't spend just an hour and a half. So do we have any questions? Because yes, time flies. <laughs> I can't believe it's been an hour and a half. I was in the zone. Thank you so, so much. And thanks for spending your Saturday morning with us. From the future. And thank you to Celine for being so awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah.